Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me back here on KB Decor Crafts. For today's video, I wanted to stick with the boho theme and create a couple more DIYs for you guys using Dollar Tree items. I've been working on converting my living room and dining room space with more boho modern farmhouse flair, so any DIYs that I create, I will be sharing with you all. Also, I'll be starting some of my fall DIYs pretty soon, so stay tuned for those. And make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on those DIYs. Now let's get started. For my first DIY, I'll be using two of these mini palettes from Dollar Tree, also some of these jumbo popsicle sticks that I got from Hobby Lobby. Now using some Gorilla Wood Glue, I'm going to go ahead and join these two palettes together. Definitely make sure that these are lined up together properly and set them off to the side to dry. Now taking the jumbo popsicle sticks, I wanted to make sure that I had a nice straight edge at the end of my stick. So I just used my ruler, marked that off, and then cut them down with my scissors. That's the great part about these popsicle sticks that you can cut them down very easily with some scissors. Make sure you sand down any rough edges as well. I wanted these to be different um, sizes, so I had ones that were about four and a half inches long and then ones that measured from three, I believe, three and a half inches, and then I just kept taking every half inch off when marking my sticks. Then of course go ahead and cut them all down to size. And for my project, I cut down three different sizes. Now once my two palettes were completely dried, I used my Waverly Wax Antique Paint to stain this. You could use any stain of course, but this is just the one I chose to use. So I painted that all over and then using a dry paper towel, I just dried off all of the excess um, coloring just to give it more of a natural wood tone look. Once it dried, I did want to tone down a little more of that color and I just grabbed a piece of sandpaper and just began to sand all around the palettes just to tone that color down. Now here you can see the difference between the two sides and I definitely prefer the sanded side better. So off camera I went ahead and stained all of my wood pieces and I did stain some of them a little darker than the other, I just wanted that contrast of colors, but I used my wood glue again to glue them all together. I found out this worked best to glue them all side by side and the arrangement that I wanted them and then let them dry completely. It is very important to make sure that they are completely dry before you pick them up. And once it is dry, we're gonna go ahead and add a generous amount of wood glue on the sides of the palettes to then place our siding of this planter on top, making sure that it completely dries before you begin any of the other sides. Otherwise, it's just going to collapse. And for the sides, I just chose to glue them one by one, making sure that they were gonna be right up against the edge of the palette. And once it's all dry, you have this really awesome planter. I love how it looks and you could leave it just as is. I just decided to add some wooden beads to the bottom to give it a little height. These wooden beads are from Amazon, which I'll have a link down in the description below. And I just stained them again with the Waverly Wax Antique Paint. And using some more of that wood glue, I went ahead and attached them to each four of the corners of this rectangle. I also added four more to the center to make sure that that wouldn't collapse if I had any extra weight inside of it. So here's what it looks like on my console table. I just added some faux succulents and I love how this looks. So moving on to our next DIY, I originally had a different vision in mind for these shadow boxes that I got from Dollar Tree. I was going to keep the glass part of it, but I broke one, so that ruined my vision. And I decided to see what else I could make out of these. Uh, I gave them all a fresh coat of paint with the Waverly Ink chalk paint, which is just the color black, um, just to freshen them up a bit. I made sure to paint that insert part of the shadow box as well. Now as for the backing of the shadow boxes, I originally painted them with white chalk paint, but I did not like how that looked. So I'm using the color plaster in the Waverly brand chalk paint, and I just like how it's more of an off-white color, and I think it looks better for this project. Then taking some black acrylic paint, I just painted on any patterns that I could come up with that were more of the boho style. I was also referencing off of a pillow that I had. You could look up some other patterns or whatever you'd like, but this is just what I came up with for each of my boxes. 
Now I originally only had two boxes at first, but later on I added a third. Now when I was putting these back together, I had to make sure to include that insert that came with these shadow boxes. They do also have other shadow boxes that don't have this, at least the ones without the glass, so you don't have to worry about it if you have the other ones. Using some more of those wooden beads from earlier, I wanted to attach them to the bottoms of these frames using some wood glue, but it didn't work out so great using wood glue, so I don't recommend it. I definitely recommend to use E6000 because that's what's gonna hold these together a lot better. Now, of course, using E6000, that is gonna take a little longer to dry, but you wanna make sure to glue two of them on the bottoms of each of the frames. Now once those are dry, we're going to be using some E6000 not wood glue to attach both shadow boxes together. Now here's where I think if I had some clamps to use, it would have came in handy to hold these together, but I actually sat here for a good bit holding them together. I did also attach two of the wooden beads to the bottom of this piece. So I wanted to be able to hang this up on my wall, so I took a piece of nautical rope and measured out how much I needed and glued it onto the back. You'll also notice that I added two beads on top, which I later on decided to take off when I added my third box. Here's the finished result with all three of the boxes glued together and hung up on my wall. I really like the different patterns that I use, definitely giving the space that boho vibe. For my last DIY, I'm repurposing a Christmas DIY that I did last year using one of these Dollar Tree canisters. I just repainted everything, covering it all in white chalk paint. Then taking some raffia from Dollar Tree, I split it up and created three strand braids. I created about four of them for this next part of the project. You want to braid them until you can't anymore and then tie it off with another piece of raffia. I later decided I didn't want this little handle on the top part of my canister, so I removed that and then taking some of these sticky uh, little dot stickers from Dollar Tree that I had painted with white chalk paint for a previous DIY, I wanted to kind of adorn this canister with some white little dots and I created a pattern all around it. What I love about these adhesive dots is that they do stick on pretty well, but I do also like to add a layer of Mod Podge to make sure that they won't fall off later on. So after adding a dot with a finger space in between all around, I went ahead and added another dot kind of like in the center of those two, uh, but more on top, kind of creating a triangle. I'm sorry if I laugh at myself a lot. Sometimes I say things and I'm like, did I really just say that? But yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to do but laugh. But yeah, you're going to do that all the way around the canister. And then taking those braided raffia ropes, we're going to wrap this around the entire lid portion of this canister. So then adding a generous amount of hot glue, I begin to wrap around my braided raffia. I try not to have so much glue showing through this, so I just add dabs of glue every so often as I'm wrapping around. Now once you end up back where you started, you're gonna add some glue kind of on top of that to continue wrapping towards the top of the lid. Now for me, I like to clean up my work as I go, so I just started snipping off any extra pieces of raffia that I saw hanging off. 
Then taking another one of your braided ropes, you're gonna add some glue to the center of the lid. Then begin by gluing it down right in the middle and start to wind your raffia around and glue in place on top of the lid. Make sure you're adding little dabs of glue as you go so that way the raffia doesn't start to lift. Now once the entire lid is completely covered, I wanted to add one of these wooden beads on top. I just left it that natural wood tone color and put a little dab of hot glue on top and put it right in the middle. And also at the last minute, I decided to add another row with these adhesive dots. But also you can cover the entire jar with these two and that would look really cute as well. I love how this looks on my console table right next to my succulent planter. It really gives off that bohemian vibe and also fits in with the modern farmhouse flair as well. I hope you guys enjoyed these three easy DIYs and get a chance to recreate them. And if you do, don't forget to tag me on Instagram. I have a few other home decor pieces in mind that I wanted to make and then we're going into fall DIYs. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and let me know in the comments down below what DIYs you would like to see. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one.